He's moving. He's moving. And you better be ready to move with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading this morning will come from Romans 12, 1 through 2. And the scripture reads, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to the world any longer with his superficial values and customs, but be transformed by the progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. I've read you Mark 12, 1 through 2. May the Lord have a blessing on the reader and the hearing this word. May we bow our heads for prayer. Father, we thank you for this time that you've given us. We thank you for this time that you've given us. Dear most precious and eternal Father, Lord, we just come telling you thank you, God. Thank you, God, for raining down on us, God.
we honor you today, God. Have your way in this place, God. Have your way in this place, God. Move like only you can move, God. Heal like only you can heal, God. Deliver like only you can deliver, God. Set free like only you can set free, God. Break us, God, if we need to be broken, God. Shake us if we need to be shaken, God. You have your way, God. You are the part of God, and we are the clay, God. Do what only you can do, God. Hallelujah. Use us, oh God, for your glory, God. For your glory, God. We thank you, oh God, for the one that's bringing the word this morning, God. Bless him in a mighty way, God. Bless him in a special way, God. Pour out your spirit and your power on him, God. We just love you, God. We thank you for his life, God. His dedication and obedience, God. His sacrifice, oh God, to the gospel, God. We bless you, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for him, God. Answer the prayers, oh God, that he has prayed, God, in the midnight hour, God. We see you to do it, God. We know you to do it, God. And if you do it for him, God, we know, oh God, that you will do it for us, God. And we thank you, God, and we bless you in this place, God. We honor you today, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Yeah, it reaches. Hallelujah. God reaches for us. He's been doing it all of our lives. He's been reaching for us. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful today for the blood of Jesus that reaches to the highest mountain. That gives us strength. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. We are grateful again for what he has done and what he is doing. I said give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. You in your right mind. You didn't made it to the house safely. You ought to give him your best praise. For one more Sunday. Thank you for one more day. How you blessed me. I dare not sit down, Lord. I dare not hold my arms. I dare not close my mouth, but I'll open up my mouth and I'll bless you. Because you're worthy. But I didn't know right or wrong. You were with me. When I made some mistakes.
listen, I want to go ahead and preach because I just feel it in here right now. Is that okay, Minister Brown? Amen. Go to Luke chapter 19. I've been talking about journeying on this road to Calvary with Jesus. Stand with me if you have your word with you or you have your device. If you can turn to Luke chapter 19, verse 11, starting with verse 11. Very familiar passage of scripture. Verse 11 says, and as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Somebody say, Occupy. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given uh, the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pounds have gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. The second king said, Lord, thy pound had gained five pounds. And he said, Likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin, for I feared thee, because thou art an austere man, thou takest up thy uh, take it up that thou thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee. Thou wicked servant, thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping what I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he, he has ten pounds. He says, For I say unto you that unto every one hath shed that every one hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. Let me read that one more time. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not that I would reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Yeah. Help me preach. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what are you going to do with this gifts? That's what I want to talk about just for a few moments this morning. What are you going to do with this gifts? My brothers and my sisters, God has been good to us. No matter how you look at our lives, yeah. if we are honest, we must acknowledge that God has been good to us. Yeah. It is God who has given us the gift of life. It was God who created us in his image. God is the one who has made us a little lower than angels. Yeah, it was God who woke you up this morning, started you on your way, gave you shelter, gave you food, put clothes on your back and shoes on your feet. It is God's gift of grace and mercies uh, that are new every morning that keeps us from being consumed and destroyed. Yet God has blessed us in the midst of a pandemic, kept us healthy, kept us in our right mind and allowed us to even reinvent ourselves in the midst of it all. In our text, Luke tells us about an incident that occurs in the life of Jesus as he travels 
Jews on the road to Calvary, yeah. down the outskirts of Jerusalem, Jesus stops the crowd that followed him and tells them a parable, a parable, a story that they can relate to, to prepare them for what was about to take place in his life and in theirs. Yeah. Jesus knew that they were expecting him to enter Jerusalem and to immediately uh, overthrow the government and to become king and ruler in the reign. Yeah. Jesus tells them this parable uh, to prepare and to encourage those who believe and also to convict the hearts of those who had yet to believe yeah. Yeah. in him. Yeah. Oh, that's why I love Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's always concern about us learning and understanding who he is. Yeah. Oh, what a creator who's concerned about his creation, yeah. who, who, who's, who's concerned about uh, those who are uh, 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 beneath him. Yeah. But yet, Jesus, again, he's trying to help them. He's always trying to lead his people, always trying to guide his people, yeah. always trying to provide his best gift to yeah. his people. Jesus tells the crowd a parable, a story that is really about him and, will, and what will take place in Jerusalem in just a few days. Are y'all with me? He says there was this noble man, a good man, who was called away uh, to be crowned king and then he would return. But before this man left, he called together ten of his servants and gave them gifts, yeah. money, talents, and told them to take them and to use them to invest them for him while he was gone. Yeah. Oh, can I put a pin there? You do know that Jesus, again, he uh, died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was buried in a grave. Yeah, yeah. But he got up that Sunday morning with all power yeah. in his hand. Yeah. Then the record is, is that he, he showed himself to his disciples and then he went away on the cloud. Yeah. And he promised that he was going to return. Oh, it's the same king that he's talking about. This is the same one that, that he's telling in the parable that he would leave and he would come back. Yeah. And he again has given his people gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus says the people didn't like him. As a matter of fact, they hated him. They even sent a delegation to tell those with power they didn't want him yeah. to be their king. Yeah. Oh, Jesus painted the picture and called it just as it would be. He knew that these same folks yeah. who would enter Jerusalem crying Hosanna in just a few days yeah. Yeah. would be the same ones crying crucify him. Yeah. Yeah. They would be the same ones who would mock him and refuse to accept him as king. Yeah. Jesus says when the noble man returned as king, he called his servants whom he had entrusted yeah. with his gifts, his talents, and money. He wanted to see his investment. Yeah. Yeah. He wanted to see his profits. Yeah. He wanted to see what they had done yeah. Yeah. with his gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the first servant invested his gifts and money and earned ten times what he was given. The king said, well done, good servant. I'm making you governor, ruler over ten cities. Yeah. The second servant invested his gifts and money and earned five times what he was given. Yeah. And again, the king said, well done, good servant. I'm making you governor, ruler over five cities. Yeah. The next servant yeah. returned the original amount back to the king. He said, I hid your gifts. I hid your talents. I hid your money. I knew you were shrewd. I knew you were a hard man with great expectations. And this angered the king. This angered the king. And, and then the king told the servant, you could have at least put the gift, the money, in the bank. And you could have at least put it in the bank so it could have earned some interest. The king commanded the other servants yeah. take that one yeah, gift that he has yeah. and give it to the one with ten gifts. Right. Other servants thinking this, this is unfair yeah. uh, king. Yeah. Uh, this is wrong. Yeah. But he says no. Yeah. The king answered to those who know how to use their gifts yeah. more will be given. Yeah. Oh, don't let that go over your head today. Yeah. To those who know how to use their gifts, more will be given. And those who do nothing, the little they have, it'll be taken away. Oh, this story blessed me. I read it and heard it preached.
preached many times. Well, when I heard it this week, yeah, I heard the voice of a shepherd. I heard the voice of Jesus speaking in the, in, in the voice of a shepherd. I heard the voice of a pastor, uh, one who loves his people and wants the best for them. Oh, I cannot tell you how many times, how many days, how many nights I stay up praying and, and crying out to God for people in this church and people in the kingdom uh, totally. Asking God again to help us to recognize our gifts, help us to use our gifts, help us to give the best of our service while we have a chance. Oh, it blessed me. Yeah, Jesus, he wanted the best for them. He wants the best for us. He wants us to understand the value of using the wonderful gifts that he has given us. And today he would have me to ask you, what are you going to do? Yeah. With the gifts he's given you. Yeah. What are you going to do yeah. with the gifts he has given you? Oh, yeah. I want to encourage you to use the gifts yeah. that God has blessed you with. Yeah. The noble man here in the parable told his servants to use the gifts yeah. for him. Yeah. Yeah. Take what I'm giving you and use it to the best yeah. of your ability. Yeah. And that's my first point this yeah. morning. Yeah. Use the gifts that he has given you for his glory. Use it for his glory. The first servant took the gift and multiplied it tenfold. The second servant took the gift and didn't do as well as the first, but he did what he was capable of doing. Oh, please understand, God does not, he does not measure us uh, the same. He doesn't, he knows again that there's some who are able to do it at a different level than others. But all he wants us to do is to be faithful and to be committed and doing it at our best. God gets glory. Not just out of what we produce and accomplish. He gets glory out of our commitment to honoring and serving him. When we take what he has given us and unwrap it and put it to work, God comes alongside of us and blesses it accordingly. Yeah. Oh, you may not have the title or letters behind your name. You may not have the special training and skills of others, but use what he has given you for his glory. And know that it is more than enough. Yeah. It's more than enough yeah. when you use it for yeah. him. Yeah. Come here, David. I hear you in verse Samuel 17. David took the gift that God gave him and five smooth stones wrapped it up in a little raggedy rag and declared to Goliath, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have this day the Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Oh, you know the story, David. Slave Goliath. Yeah, with one of those little five smooth stones, God took down Goliath. Yeah. Use your gift. And bring God glory Amen. and honor. Amen. The third servant in our text presented his gift back to the king. Yes. Just as it was. Yes. He hid it. He did nothing with it. Yeah. He did what many are doing today. Yeah. Nothing yeah. with their gift. Yeah. Sitting yeah. on their gifts. Yeah. And that's my second point. Yeah. Don't sit on it. Yeah. Don't waste it. Don't sit on it. Don't waste it. Since God has been kind and given each of us gifts, gifts that are designed to help us and, and help to help brother fulfill his will and purpose in the earth, gifts that he has entrusted with us, gifts from his treasures in heaven for such a time as this, gifts that were given to minister to the needs of his people. Don't sit on it. Don't waste it. God knew who, what, and when he would need your gift in this season. He created you for this season. He created you for your family. He created you for the circle of influence that you have. He created you to be a blessing in the earth. First Peter 4. 7 3 11 says the end of the world is coming soon. Yeah. Therefore, be earnest and disciplined. 
discipline in your prayers. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you gifts, it says, from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Yes. Then speak. And so God himself is speaking. Do you have the gift of helping? He asks. Helping others, he asks. Do it with all strength and energy that God supplies. Then in everything you do, it will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. Oh, tell your neighbors, don't sit on it. Oh, I know some of you have gifts that you're not using because someone hurts you and hurt your feelings years ago. They wouldn't let you lead. Uh, uh, they, they, they talked about your unpolished, your unprepared gift. Uh, they took advantage of you. They made you mad. They, they made fun of you. But listen here, boo. The gifts don't belong to you. The gifts that, that, that he has blessed you with, they weren't meant for you to keep it to yourself. Your gift was created for you to use to bless the kingdom of God. It was not created for you to hide it. It was not created for you to uh, wait to use it until you get your life together. And when you get old, to sit down and use it. Your gift was created to bless someone that God has sent and is sending your way. Oh, I feel like preaching if y'all help me. Matthew 5, 16, Jesus says, let your good deeds shine. Let them shine. Let them shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Yeah, use it for his glory. And don't sit on it. Don't waste it. Finally, remember, God rewards faithfulness. I'll say that one more time. God rewards faithfulness. Our text says that as each servant presented their gifts to the king, the king rewarded them according to their faithfulness. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, oh, misters, God is looking for people who will be faithful to him. God is going to judge us according to how we have handled his gifts. Our God has high expectations. He has high expectations of his servants. He expects us to be a blessing in the kingdom of God. He wouldn't bless us with the gift if we were not capable of using the gift for his glory. Oh, he expects us to be good stewards and managers of the resources he has provided us. He expects us to manage our money, to manage our possessions, our relationships, and our time wisely. Are y'all hearing me today? He expects us to give our all to him. He expects us to serve him faithfully. He expects us to go when we don't want to go, when we don't feel like going, when we're tired. When they talk about it, when they lift us up, when they tear us down, he's still expecting us to go. He expects us to get engaged and involved in causes that we don't want to get involved in. That might again uh, put a tarnish on our reputation. But again, when we do it for him, when we do it for the least of these, we do it for him. He expects us to give him the best of our service. And when we serve faithfully, he rewards us. But even more, he rewards us faithfully. God created you. And he knows what you are capable of doing. Today, I, I, I beg you, my brother, I beg you, my sister, to allow him to be king of your life. Allow him to rule and to reign over your life. Take what he has given you and use it for his glory. Oh, remember only what you do for Christ will last. You may build great cathedrals, large or small. You can build skyscrapers grand and tall. You may conquer all the failures of the past, but only what you do for Christ will last. You may seek earthly power and fame. The world 
uh, might be impressed with your great name. Soon the glories of this life will all be past. But only what you do for Christ will last. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for him will be counted at the end. Only what you do for him will last. What are you going to do with this gift? What are you going to do with this gift? What are you going to do with this gift? Oh, and my sister started reading Romans 12. And I, I heard God again say, I told you. Put that one in there. <laughs> but look at what he says. Yeah. Not just those first two verses, which says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through uh, the grace. Give it unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to God, uh, uh, to, to God, has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same, so we being many are one body in Christ, and for everyone members one of another. Here it is, having then gifts. Differing yes. according to the grace oh, that is given to yeah. us. Well, the prophecy, let us prophesy according to the to the proportion of faith yeah. or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry yeah. or he that teaches or teaching yeah. or he that exhorted on our exaltation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Yeah. He that ruleth with yeah. diligence. Yeah. He that is shrewd yeah. with mercy yeah. and with cheerfulness. Yeah. Let love. Let love. Oh, I just came by to tell you today, use your gift. Use your gift. Don't you sit on it. Use it for his glory. And watch God do what he said he'll do. He says when we get around the throne, he's going to look in the book. And he's going to see whose name is written there. He'll know it because he wrote it there. God again. Amen. Bless you. Not only when you get there, but even right now. Race is not given to the one that runs the fast. But it's given to the one who will endure to the end. I know you might be tired. I know you might be weary. But don't get weary in well-doing. Keep doing what the master has called you to do. And know again that payday is coming. Payday it's coming. And oh, I can't wait to be around the master's feet and watch him again. Be faithful in how he rewards us. As Minister Brown sings, the door of the church is open. Won't you stand on your feet with us? The door is open virtually. If you'd like to join Riverview Community Church, the view, click on the join button, put it in the chat. We will connect with you today. If you'd like to join here, in person, we invite you to come down. Come take my hand. And give God your heart. And watch him again. No The door's open.
we thank you again for what we have heard, what we've experienced today. Well, God, we pray again that you would help that man, that woman, that poor girl that is struggling, that is warring with how again to live in this world, <clears throat> how to use their gift for your glory. God, I pray again, you give them the anointing, the power, the strength to get up and not to sit down. Help them again to use the gift while they have a chance. God, for we, we don't know when our last day but we know again you are coming and you have promised that you will return. Help us to be ready. Help us to be ready. Help us to remain faithful and to endure to the end. Bless those who are sick, those who bereaved, those broken hearted that we've already called their names. Do for them, God, what you only you can do, God. Heal, deliver, set free. God, become you now to give a, the gift that you've given us materially, financially. We come giving it back to you. Bless it now, God. Let it accomplish that which you sent it forth to do. God, then do what you said in your word that you would open up the windows of heaven. Pour out blessings that we won't have room enough to receive. God, you know today there are some who need bountiful blessings. Pour them out right now. Do it according to your word. And we'll forever give you the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The people of God say amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. As you get your gifts in your hand, again, as we real quick announcements from you do while you're getting your gift, while they're being collected. I want to remind you, number one, again, Wednesday night Bible study. We will have our Wednesday night Bible study at 7 o'clock immediately following that. We're going to have a short meeting via Zoom. Amen? Amen. So at 8 o'clock, we're going to have a short Zoom meeting on Wednesday night for 30 minutes. And I want to again address some things that we've got to do, some things that we've got to prepare for. I want to remind you that Revival Holy Week, April the 13th through the 15th, Revival. Amen. That Wednesday night, Bishop Althea Green will be here in Real Life Ministries. Amen. 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 That Thursday night, Monday, Thursday, as it's called, Dr. Timothy Jackson, Tim, Pastor Tim, will be here with Hope Fellowship Church. Don't want to miss it. And then on Good Friday at 12 noon, Pastor Herbert Jackson and River of Life Church will be here as well to bless our hearts. Amen. Amen. So get ready, get ready, and then that Following Sunday is Easter. The Sunday prior to is Palm Sunday. So get ready. I'm ready. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I, I, I'm just all going to say, I, God is. I'm trying again to remain as relevant and on point as He wants me to be. But I, when I tell you again, I'm trying to let y'all catch up, but I'm trying not to run too fast. But when I tell you, he's been pouring, he's been pouring, he's been pouring, and I am, I keep telling y'all, I'm going to run while I can. Amen. Amen. So again, come on, run with me. Amen. Amen. This Saturday is first Saturday. So ladies, those of you who missed it the last time, 
first and third Saturdays. Put it on. Come on, this is the beginning of April. Go on and get your work out with Lady O. Amen. 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 So come on and be, get ready. Get your tennis shoes. Get you some, some stretch pants or something. Or some shocks. And be ready. Amen. Again, we thank God again for each of you. Again, Brother Murphy, again, we're so grateful. Glad you with us today. God bless you. Tell my friend, Dr. Stewart, thank you for letting me have you for just a, a little while this morning. Amen. 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 Come on, let's stand on our feet. to your house and to worship you. We thank you for our friends who have joined us and who have come to celebrate your wonderful and matchless name. We ask you again to meet them according to their needs, God, whatever it is. Meet them at the point of need today. Continue this week, God, with each of us, God, and work your purpose in our life. Help us again to remain focused and to remain faithful. We will be careful to give you the praise. We love you and we give you the glory. Watch over us. Keep us until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.